And to expand on more of what John talked about, Ayos Milovich, a managing partner at the investment management firm Gerber Kawasaki. Good to see you, sir. Um, Thanks for having me. Yeah, so John is hinting that there's going to possibly be a rate hike, I suppose, in September. And, and I guess the rest of Wall Street, I've been hearing anywhere between 50 and 75. But then I've also heard that if we see data points that the economy is slowing down, we, we may not have to do it. So which camp are you in? Um, we still think that they're going to raise rates uh, in the next meeting. I think inflation is coming down, but ultimately the Fed is kind of stuck to their guns on this. Uh, inflation is still pretty high, but we're probably in the 50 to 75 basis point camp um, as last time they've gotten a little bit more dovish compared to where they were, but we still think that they're going to raise rates. Do, do you think that's the right thing to do? Uh, I do think it's the right thing to do because, you know, we're still in a scenario where Albeit inflation is coming down, we think it's still, you know, running pretty hot. So making sure that people don't have free money and, you know, slowing the economy down somewhat is still important. But I think we're getting to the point where we're, we're sort of coming to equilibrium really soon. And I think the next rate hike is it still prudent and then kind of wait and see after that. Right. And then, of course, you hear about the let's wait to see to what, what the data says. And I'll give you some data. We've seen a, uh, a significant increase in the number of houses that have price reductions. We've mm -hmm. seen a significant increase in U.S. home mortgage rates, you know, the 15 and the, the really the, the 30 year and the jumbos as well. We've seen oil prices now fall, you know, in, in its 90s when it was almost at 120 at one point. Mm -hmm. And, you know, put all these data points together, what other data points? are they looking for to see that the economy has slowed enough? What does it mean to have it slow enough? Yeah, I think it's hard to tell because we are in this kind of weird dichotomy. Uh, we're, we've never been in a situation where jobs were at an all time you know, good versus inflation running rampant versus uh, risks of a recession looming at the same time. So I think the Fed is kind of in uncharted territories uh, right now. But I think the reduction in inflationary rates from here is a good place to start from here on out. I think they're just looking for probably the month over month. You know, as we said in the in the last month, it was still over one percent. If we get sort of a zero to you know to one you know zero point two zero point three percent, I think the Fed will start to understand that you know this is all coming down. Uh, I think the unemployment rate starts to tick up at some point soon if we continue to get these uh, you know these participation rate numbers. Um, but ultimately, I think the Fed needs to see the economy slow. I think they, we need to see a marked tick down in inflation for the Fed to really hit the pause button. Well, well, one of the gauges, and you might laugh at this, that I, I looked at for the past couple of years is when you talk about free money, I, yeah. I looked at some of the, the, the Reddit stocks and the yeah. Bitcoins of the world, and you, I, I watched them skyrocket, and I had these young young 20-something-year-olds tell me that I was missing the boat, and, and I had no idea what I was talking about, that the old economy is dead, and it's all about the, the Bitcoin and crypto. So now yeah. they got me looking at this stuff, too. But I <laughs> noticed I notice that it, it did dip down, and recently it's gone back up again. So yeah. is the free money, is that the free money gauge? I don't know that it's necessarily the free money gauge. I think, you know, if you have an asset that we think is actually a good long-term asset, like Bitcoin, um, but maybe not the meme stocks because we're not into those, but some of the stuff that's just gotten obliterated, you know, the Bitcoin or the SPACs or, you know, some of the high-risk stocks, they've just gotten beaten down so hard. So I think they're just getting a bid at this point um, and it's shaking out a lot of the frothy investors. And now people are coming in who, who do have a long-term vision. Again, not the Reddit meme stocks. But, you know, Bitcoin, we do believe, has a long-term place in the financial markets. So, you know, whether that's Bitcoin's worth 25000 or 200000 we don't really know because it's still a nascent technology. But we look at Bitcoin as, as a, you know, a parallel financial system. But really, it is kind of a high-risk tech stock, ultimately. Right. I, I look, I, to your point, and, and this is probably a kudos to you, is that Bitcoin, despite it being down as much as it has been, it still outperformed some of my... Uh, crummy ones in the portfolio. We won't, won't even. We won't even go there. Let's yeah. talk about the health of the consumer because the housing market and consumers are the two things that drive the U.S. economy. It's a huge, huge part of it. And we t we saw them complain earlier when oil prices were high. We're not going to travel. We're not going to drive. We're not going to do this. And you saw all the polls say that more than you know 50 or 60 or 70 percent of them were going to cut back on all this stuff, right? Yeah. But we haven't seen it. Consumption remains strong. Uh, air travel prices remain high. 
people are still driving like crazy. And I, it, what's it going to take to calm? I, it's so strange that you want the consumers to slow down their spending, right. but that's kind of what we're asking for. Yeah, I think, uh, first of all, I don't think we're going to see any kind of meaningful slowdown until the summer travel season is over. Um, and I do think that we're going to see a slowing a bit as people kind of cut back. But if, if energy costs, and not just energy, but the prices of all these commodities, you know, lumber is down 70% from a high. All these things are down big. And I think as that trickles through the economy, we might get a slowdown. We're not necessarily in the recession camp. We might get a slowdown uh, as, you know, it's been over 50 days in a row now that gas prices have fallen. So once that kind of trickles through the system and we get into the holiday season, I think we're going to see that the consumer has been really resilient. And, and the U.S. consumer is pretty interesting. You know, we spend when we feel good and we also spend when we feel bad. So uh, I think we're just going to see some, some good yeah. numbers better than people expect.